Hello and welcome to episode 46 of Stitched in Sweden. I'm Maria, your host, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as mmonska. The show notes for this week will hopefully be up on the blog, which is stitchedinsweden.blogspot.com, and I may get some up there from last week as well. I know they have not been posted yet. Um, so today I will talk to you a little bit about this week in Stockholm, some works in progress, one finished object, some upcoming knitting plans, as well as uh, a little bit back into the bread experiments, um, which is part of my goals for this year. So I thought I would start out today with my works in progress, uh, because this week in Stockholm might be a little bit longer than usual, and I'll just combine that with the bread segment at the end. To start out with what I've been working on, I did have a little bit of extra time this past weekend because it was the Easter holiday, and unlike in the U.S. where I didn't get time off for Easter, we have Friday and Monday off here. So I had my exam on Thursday and then was free until today, which is Tuesday, when I began my new class. So I thought it was only right to uh, cast on a couple new projects. So I will start out with a project that you haven't seen before. And this is in my modular modular project bag, which I bought in uh, Denver at Fancy Tiger Crafts. Um, but I know that she also has an Etsy shop, I believe. And what I have cast on is a an asymmetrical shawl, uh, which I decided to cast on after I saw, um, was it Tracy's or Jody's? I think it was Jody's on the Grocery Girls podcast. Her uh, shawl that she showed as a finished finished object that she has finished previously. And this is the Quoth, uh pattern, which is a pattern by Cameron, no, Carmen Smoloni? Smolone? Smolone, maybe? And basically it's one of these ones where you start at the corner with just a couple of stitches cast on, and then you keep increasing and increasing um, this is a free pattern on Ravelry, and you can see how much I have so far. It features uh, alternating sections of um, stockinette stitch, and then also these dropped stitches here that create this these little sort of ladders in between uh, the stockinette sections. And you can see here, not all the stitches are dropped yet, so these pearl ridges here will be dropped eventually to become this sort of ladder part. And this shawl, um, I, I know from some of the project notes, but also uh, I think the pattern itself says, of course, blocking is very important, as with any shawl or lace project, I think goes without saying that blocking is important just to get the lace really, or the, it's not really lace, but get the stitches to open up and the project to sort of, yeah, spread out and become really the finished object in the end. So I have just been working on this for a couple of days, it's an easy project to pick up, and the yarn that I'm using for this was a gift from a friend, and it is Manos del Uruguay Fino, and this is in the silhouette color. It is a 70% silk, no, 30% silk, 70% extra fine merino, and there's approximately 490 yards, which is 450 meters for 100 grams. And What's really nice about this yarn is that you get some information here on the inside which basically tells you that Manos del Uruguay is a nonprofit organization that assembles women in cooperatives, scatters, th 
throughout the countryside of Uruguay. And the aim of the organization is to bring economic and social opportunities to rural women. And it goes through a little bit about their dyeing process, and it's just nice to uh, support a company like that, I think. Um, and like I said, this was a gift from a friend, and I'm really enjoying knitting this up so far. It's a little bit variegated. As you can see, there is, or I guess it might be considered tonal. I would say there are two main colors in this, uh, which are this sort of denim blue and then a lighter, a lighter blue and then more of a tan in there. I think it will be really fun to work on just as sort of a side project and something that I can bring to class if I want, and um, also a nice project in the end. Another project that I cast on this week is the Timeless Henley, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli, and it's in her and Vera Valamaki's new publication which is Interpretations 3, and I showed this to you last week, I believe. The Timeless Henley comes from the word aged. If you know this, um, yeah, the story behind the interpretations is that each pattern from one of the designers comes from a certain word, and then and this one was from Aged. So there is Hohi modeling the Timeless Henley. And it features a lace motif on the front and back with um, sort of a, a ribbing on the shoulders and the back shoulders as well. And stockinette sleeves. I am really enjoying this knit so far. Part of it is definitely that I am enjoying the yarn a lot. It's my first time knitting with hedgehog fibers. This is the sock base, and it is in the color way, color, <laughs> uh, dad. Um, it is in the color implode, and it is a 70, no, 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon, 100 grams, 350 meters. And I have four skeins of this. You can see the difference here in a skeined one versus the caked up ones. And so far I am on my first ball. I did knit a swatch that I showed you last week with testing out all of the different stitch patterns that I'll use for this project and of course to get the gauge information, so how many stitches that I'm getting per inch. And I also cast on the back. And here it is so far. It looks pretty tiny, but uh, this is one by one rib, so it stretches quite a bit. And um, here it is. So you can see that I have really just started the lace portion here. Not very much yet, but so far it's really fun and the lace part grows a lot vertically, pretty quickly, which was noted in the pattern why it was particularly important to do a swatch in the stitch pattern so that you know how it will behave. Uh, and so it seems like it's going fast so far, but it's it's a really enjoyable knit, so that's always good. I'm knitting this on a new to me needle, which is the Haya Haya Bamboo Needles. I purchased these from meadowyarn.co.uk, and these are a US 2.5, which is a 3mm needle. These are the Haya Haya Bamboo interchangeable needles, so they uh, fit onto the cables that I already have for my Haya Haya Sharps, which is definitely a bonus, and they have really nice tips, they're smooth, I find them not too grippy to knit with. My 
um, hesitation to knit with bamboo or wood needles in the past is that I find them quite slow. But for this project, um, this yarn is rather slick, I would say, and the bamboo needles are working really nicely. I enjoy using them a lot. And I think, for me, working with bamboo needles, a key thing is that the needles have to be pointy. And at least for this size, which is, again, 3 millimeter, 2.5, um, they are quite, the tips are quite pointy. I could imagine maybe in the larger sizes that might not be the case as much, but I haven't seen any of the other sizes in person, so I don't know exactly about that. But really enjoying this project, and um, I'm happy to have it cast on because I am looking forward to wearing it. The last project that I worked on this week, well, actually that's not true, another project that I worked on this week is my Winter Storm Pullover, which is a pattern by Ann Meyer, and she's the needle lady on Ravelry, and this is in my Love Sock Wool project bag, which uh, was a very generous gift to me. And I really love this project bag. It is has a little bit of interfacing in it, so uh, it's not stiff, but more like I would say kind of a quilt batting type interfacing. And uh, it gives it just a little bit enough protection, I guess, that my needles don't poke through the bag as easily. Um, and it's fun fabric, so I can fit my sweater in here so far, that's the pattern. Um, and I know that I took the needles off this project, so I need to make sure that I don't lose my stitches now. But I will show you a bit of progress on this. So I took my needles off for the shawl the Kvothe shawl that I'm working on because uh, it's the same size and I'm waiting for some more yarn on this project but here it is so far Ooh, I don't have any little stoppers, that's what I need oh, yeah. let's see so here is my winter storm so far I am just about at the mid waist point, I think maybe slightly farther, and this is also a really fun project to knit. I, um, yeah, I just, it's been really fun to work on, I think partially because, well, it's just, I don't have a reason why so much it was fun to work on, but I thought that knitting a color work sweater in fingering weight yarn would take a long time because color work mitten, mittens sometimes take a long time or other projects that I've done like hats or something in color work before and this just seems to be flying by and I think part of the reason is because I'm not magic looping it at least for the body I have everything in on one 24 inch um, cable, circular cable, and so I am able to get a bit more of a rhythm or flow with the color work and that's something that's really nice. Uh, I actually knit quite a bit of this in my last week of class in my previous course and I think that my classmates were quite entertained by, yeah, I don't know, this project because it is color work, it looks complicated, and yeah, I don't know, it was, it was fun. So I'm just waiting for a bit more yarn for this, I'm holding the yarn doubled, and it is the Holst Coast yarn, I am knitting it in lead for the dark gray, uh, dove for the light whitish gray, 
and then the yellow starts with an A, and I don't remember what it's called, and I don't have the tag here, um, but it's a name of a flower, I think, and you can find the information on my project page. So, yes, that is that work in progress. I'm knitting that one on my Metal Haya Haya US Force. And you would think that I would have enough needles that I could share them with multiple projects, but sometimes I do find that I still end up borrowing, stealing needles from uh, one project to work on something else. My one finished project this week is my herbarium sweater, which is a pattern by NCL Knits, and she is NCL Knits uh, on her storefront on Ravelry, I guess you could say, but her Ravelry username is Itty Bitty. She has a lot of really beautiful patterns. This one comes from, I think it's called the Love and Lace collection, and it was a really enjoyable knit. I'm wearing it, um, so I'll just yeah talk about it a little bit. Uh, this project I have now sort of a love-hate relationship with, I would say. Um, I really love the pattern, and it was fun to work on. It went really quickly. The construction was quite simple, and in that way it wasn't it felt like I could start directly and knit on it whenever because I didn't have to be measuring all the time or being aware of increases and decreases so much um, where that I would need a pattern or something. So in that way it was really fun to work on. Um, I knit this out of Papaput yarn, her sock yarn in the On Demande color, which is this screaming yellow-green. And this is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon fingering weight. And um, it says, may bleed at first wash, use gentle soap, lay flat until dry, do not iron. So I guess Part of the reason why I have a love-hate relationship with this sweater is that I'm not totally pleased with the yarn in the end. Um, and I'm afraid that it will make me not likely to wear this sweater in the future. Um, I'm wearing it now and even though I don't have, I don't tend to have very much wool sensitivity anymore, for some reason this sweater is quite itchy. I think maybe part of the reason it's itchy to me is because there is a lot of dye still left in the yarn, and that's unfortunate. Um, I worked with a lot of hand dyed yarn in the past, and I know that oftentimes yarn needs to be washed maybe a couple of times before it will run totally clear. Um, but this time, the yarn really bled a lot, um, and I actually haven't successfully washed it yet with clear water in the end. So that's a bit concerning, uh, especially because obviously this top, you can see I have a um, camisole underneath it, and it's white, and so I'm worried in the end it will be yellow, which is not what I want to happen. Uh, the other reason I'm a little bit not so happy with it in the end is because, like I said last time, the I got three skeins of this yarn and two of them were matching and one of them was really quite different. And you can see on the arm what happened with that. Of course with hand dyed yarn you want to try to alternate skeins, but when you need three skeins for a sweater and two of them are the same and one's different, then it's hard to alternate or figure out a way to blend it in. So maybe it wasn't the best idea to do it like this on the arm. I should have done it throughout the body. 
but because the back is in stockinette on this sweater, I think you still would have seen a pretty obvious difference in the two different dye lots. Um, yeah, I think for the arms, maybe it's not such a big deal because, you know, I decided to make these sort of three-quarter length sleeves and I might have them slightly pushed up, so you might not notice so much that there's a strong line between the colors, but I think here the line is pretty obvious. Not only because it's a seam, but because this is quite dark, much darker than this part. Um, I think it's more obvious on the back, like here to here. And it comes up a little bit different on camera, of course, but it's pretty apparent in person, unfortunately. So that is a bit disappointing. Um, it was a really fun project to knit, and I really do like the finished objects, so I think there is a possibility that, definitely a possibility I couldn't knit it, knit it again. Uh, right now I have a lot of other projects that I would like to knit, and yeah. I'm just a little bit bummed out by it, so we'll see. The yarn is quite fuzzy. Um, I think part of that comes from the fact that I had to wash it so many times to try to get the dye out. Um, I washed it about 10 times in different temperatures of water and with soap and without soap and with vinegar and without vinegar and I still can't get it to run clear. So if you have any tips or suggestions, um, that would be greatly appreciated. But because I was kind of trying to really rinse it out and get this dye out, I may have aggravated the fabric a bit more than I normally would for washing a hand-knit sweater. So, yes. We'll see if it makes an appearance outside the house, but I'm not sure. I guess the main thing is that I am disappointed with the color change in the, the sleeves but also it's pretty itchy, so that's too bad. But moving on, um, I'll talk a little bit about some upcoming projects that I'm thinking about. The first one that I am hoping to cast on very soon for is the Wildflowers and Honeycomb Socks, which is a pattern by This Handmade Life on Ravelry and Instagram, and Olivia, uh, is her name, her real person name, she, th this is her first pattern, it's a beautiful sock pattern with little eyelet details, and the other details of the sock look really nice too, including the heel flap, which incorporates this honeycomb design, um, and then the eyelets make up the water, water flower, wildflower part of the design, and um, I think the toe looks interesting, so I'm excited to try out this pattern and um, yeah, have it again probably as a project that I can bring with me to class. I really like Olivia's aesthetic. She has really beautiful Instagram pictures and a nice blog as well. Um, Instagram and Ravelry pictures are often the same, I suppose. So I'm just trying to decide what yarn I'm going to use to cast on this project with. I do have one more skein of the Papapoot yarn, and this is in the Smoke and Haze color. It's a really pretty color, which now the sun decided to come out, so it's getting blown out a bit. Um, it's a cream with flecks of sort of reddish sandstone and gray, I would say. And the only reason I haven't cast this on yet is because, yeah, like I said, with this sweater, I'm just a little bit unsure about the yarn. And I really love this sock pattern, so I want to make sure that it's a project that I'm going to enjoy all the way. And you can see that I hand wound this ball. Um, 
Originally I did it on my skein winder, but then I wanted to go back and check and see if there were knots in the yarn, because there were quite a few in the sweater yarn. And there are four knots in this one ball, so that kind of sucks and makes me not want to knit it because I just know that the knots are in there waiting and then I'm going to have to stop at that point and um, break the yarn. Well, yeah. Break the yarn. It's already broken. There's already a knot, but I won't knit through the knot. I will cut the yarn, start again, so that I can weave in the ends on the back rather than having a knot in the back, if that makes sense. So I'm not sure if... I'm not sure what's going to happen with this. I like the idea of using a slightly speckled yarn for this project. Um, in the original pattern she has options for contrasting uh, heels and toes, which I think looks really pretty, so I might have a look through some of my other yarn and see if something else uh, grabs me as a good yarn to knit for that project. Otherwise, my other upcoming project that I've been thinking about is the Mira sweater that I talked about last week, which is a pattern by Justina... Uh, I don't remember her last name. Laura Kaus? Yeah. Um, she has beautiful patterns and she knit the, she's the designer of the Aisling shawl, if you have seen that, and many other uh, patterns. I've knit one of her sweaters, and I have a couple more that I'm interested in knitting. Anyway, the Mira is a um, top-down raglan-style pullover with a scoop neck and a texture stitch throughout. And I was thinking that it might be a good project to revisit my um, color work pullover that I've been working on for a while with the Brooklyn Tweed Loft. I originally was basing that pattern on the Ashland pullover, which is a Brooklyn Tweed pattern, um, and then I sort of ran into some issues with the length of the body and uh, just lots of problems. So I thought maybe the Mira could make a better sort of silhouette or background pattern for this project. Uh, I like the scoop neck and I think that it could work better maybe as a top-down sweater so that I know where the color work on the sleeves lines up with the color work on the body from the beginning rather than starting from the bottom and hoping that my sleeves and arms are the same length. Sleeves and arms. Yeah, I hope my sleeves and arms are the same length. I mean, I hope, hoping that the sleeves and the body color work match up at the underarm. Anyway, I don't know if that makes sense at all. So, I've been considering that, um, but of course right now I am working on the Timeless Henley and the Winter Storm. So, those are the priorities for now. But I was just in the week I've been thinking, oh, maybe Mira could be a good um, new start to the color work pullover from before. If you don't remember that, um, I, I do have it right here, or I can show you the sleeves anyway, which I've already knit. So it would mean starting over, basically, re-knitting everything, but it might happen. We'll see. Okay, so I think that's it for upcoming. So now I will talk a little bit about this week in Stockholm. So this week was Easter, and like I said, I had a couple of days off from school, which was very nice and a much needed break um, from statistics. I had my exam on Thursday, which was hard and, yeah, exhausting. But I think it went okay in the end. Um, but an Easter break was really nice and needed. We had really nice weather here in Stockholm. 
Uh, it's definitely feeling like spring, and this morning on the way to the bus I noticed that we now have some crocuses coming up in people's yards around here. Um, so that's sort of definitely a sign that spring is on its way. We also changed our clocks forward this weekend, and I can notice directly that there's more light in the afternoons, and that's really nice. Otherwise, this week uh, I have started a new project, which is not knitting related, but I think that you, many of you know that I have been uh, interested in learning how to make bread this year. That was one of my New Year's resolutions or goals. And so far I have been using the uh, no need method from the Artisan Bread in 5 Minutes a Day book, which I have shared previously on the podcast. Uh, and this week I decided to um, give sourdough a try. So, real sourdough, I guess you could say. We watched the Netflix uh, series called Cooked, which is produced or, yeah, made by Michael Pollan. Pollan? Uh, and I have read some of his books before, like The Omnivore's Dilemma. And anyway, many of you had also suggested this cooked series, which is four episodes um, with each of the elements, so air, water, earth, and fire. And in the air episode, he goes into his yeah adventures in bread making a little bit and just talks about the importance of bread in many um, cultures in the world. And it was just inspiring to me and um, made me want to give sourdough a try. So we started our... you may be wondering why I'm looking over here. We started our sourdough starter on Sunday last week, so it's been alive and bubbling for a week and two days now. I put it in the refrigerator today for the first time, so the bubbles aren't as big and it's not as active as it has been in the past couple days, but, um, yeah, I'm actually currently waiting for my first loaf ever to finish proofing before I pop it in the oven tonight. So I have another starter, sort of. This was from today, so in, just in case you're interested, I started out with a 100% rye starter, and then this one has rye from this one, but also white and whole wheat flour in it, and it's sort of the leftovers of the leva. I don't know all the terminology yet. This is the problem with starting a new hobby, there's uh, all sorts of new terminology to learn. So this is the, sort of the leftovers from the one that I'm, the loaf that I'm making right now. But it has some of this, which is from my original starter. Anyway, it's a lot of fun to just try something else out, and I'm not sure how this loaf is going to turn out. The timing wasn't perfect on it. Um, I didn't really know how long things would take, because I didn't read through it in the beginning, so once I was... Well, I'm also reading from a couple of different sources. So, once I had started the process of making the actual loaf after keeping this starter going for the last week, which involved feeding it twice a day with new flour and water, after doing that part and getting to the point that, okay, now I'm going to make my loaf, I didn't... Yeah, I didn't know how long it was going to take from that point and how long each step took, so, for example, this morning, one step was done and ready, but then I had to go to school, and I was in school for a couple of hours, so from like 8 till 3 when I got back, and I was supposed to be doing something every 45 minutes during some of that period, so obviously I didn't do that because I was at school. Uh, 
the first one will definitely be a little bit of an experiment, but it looks good, and I guess the real test will be tonight to see if it tastes good and if it doesn't just flop in the oven. But I don't know, it looks really active and bubbly, so I think that's probably a good sign. But I'll keep you updated on that and maybe insert a picture at some point or yeah, you'll see. So that's it pretty much for bread this week, um, but it's fun to try something else out and I think I'll definitely keep using, well I say definitely now, but who knows, after I taste this bread it might be different. I will probably keep using yeast in bread um, if I make it during the week, the five minute, five artisan bread in five minutes a day method is really convenient while I'm at school and busy with life, um, but I can definitely see the sourdough method being a fun thing to do, especially like over the weekend when I have a little bit more time and I'm around to do the different steps of it. So I'll keep you updated and we will see how that goes. Otherwise, uh, this week I met with uh, my real-life knitting friend here in Stockholm, Benke, and she gave me a really kind gift, which was a total surprise. Uh, and it's this lovely sketchbook, which is from Muji. And I don't know if it's in the US. I never saw it there before, but also I didn't live in a big city when I lived in the US, so it might be in places like New York or something. Um, anyway, so this is a nice spiral bound uh, sketchbook, and I use their uh, notebooks in school because I really like the quality of the paper. It's nice and smooth to write on. And you think like, okay, does it really make a difference with what kind of paper you write on? But as soon as you write on some paper like this, you'll be like, oh, how have I just been writing on normal note paper my whole life? Anyway, it's just a blank uh, white notebook inside, and I will use this as a um, project notebook, sort of, for some knitting projects. And uh, I mentioned before that she has a really beautiful um, project notebook herself, like this. And she keeps the tags from the yarn with a little bit of a sample of the yarn. And it's big enough that you can have a you know, normal sheet of paper. So you have your pattern and you can keep your printed pattern in here as well with notes from notes that you made during the project if you want, uh, which might be useful if you ever make it again or just want to refer back to something. And hers is quite bulged up a, a bit, not like hugely, but because it has a nice little tie, it's uh, not a problem. And it just makes a nice little memory of some projects. So that was a really nice surprise. And we had a really nice afternoon walking around a bit. It was a really beautiful day here. Um, and did just a bit of knitting in a cafe. Uh, so was a lot of fun. Otherwise, this week I know that there has been a little bit of panic on Instagram uh, with the new changes coming up regarding um, the feed not being in chronological order anymore, but instead based on an algorithm. And I will just let you know that for now I am planning on staying on Instagram um, if you want, you can turn on the notifications in the upper right-hand corner for me. But, uh, it could also be really annoying because every time that I post something, you'll get a push notification that says, Maria just posted a picture. Oh, my mail just came. <laughs> that scared me. Anyway, uh, you will get a notification that I posted something and... Maybe you don't want to have a million notifications on your phone. So, uh, I guess people are 
panicked because they think it's strange that their feed will be based on an algorithm, but I'm pretty sure that there are many things in our lives that are based on tracking us and user information, like Google searches and advertisements that you get on your computer, um, all sorts of things. So I think that it's not something to panic about and that Instagram can still be a nice place to share inspiration and uh, interact with people. Um, I probably, I have a Ello? I also just don't even know how to say this other one. Ello, maybe? Because it's like hello, but without the H. E-L-L-O. I have an account there called Stitched in Sweden. I haven't posted anything yet, and I don't think I will. Um, but I thought I would just reserve that in case Instagram shuts down or something crazy. But otherwise, I think that as long as you... If you like or comment on photographs that you like or want to comment on, then you will probably continue to see photographs by that person in your newsfeed. And it's, it's strange for me to say, oh, you should like my photos, but if you're following me and because you enjoy seeing my photos, then I think by even visiting my page maybe every once in a while or something, somehow your interaction can obviously promote it to come up in your feed. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that many of you will continue to be on Instagram because I think it's a really fun place to share what I'm working on and uh, it's been a lot of fun for me to sort of practice or work on my photography skills uh, over on that. So, yeah. With the notifications thing, I know some of you have also contacted me about uh, not receiving notifications from YouTube when a new episode is uploaded. And if you would like to be updated every time there is a new episode, um, next to where you press subscribe, there's a little gadget, like a gear symbol. If you click on that, it will come up with some settings, and one of them is to send you notifications when there is a new episode posted. So you can choose to click on that if you would like, otherwise you can just... If you're subscribed, I guess it will mostly come up in your subscriptions, but I'm not really sure how, how that works either. Um, just that I know that it hasn't been coming up for everyone. It's not something, a setting that I can change, but if you want to make sure that you get notified, you can click on that and press to receive the notifications. I think that's it, so I hope that all of you are enjoying life, <laughs> um, but if you're in the northern hemisphere that you are enjoying the first signs of spring, and if you're not, that you are enjoying fall, and of course that you are loving everything that you're knitting on. So until next time, happy knitting. Bye.